Hello everyone on YouTube and welcome to this next LM simulation video. Uh, back here on uh, Train Sim 2022. So we're back. Um, I wanted to uh, showcase um, something back in Train Sim 2021, but in the time that I've been preparing to get everything ready and getting time to film the videos, TS 2022 has come out. So this is now a TS 2022 video. Um, and today we are going to be showcasing the uh, well, essentially the underground so um, I do a little bit of traveling not not too much I used to do a lot more but I do a little bit of traveling and very recently I have gone on the uh, the underground uh, on one of these uh, s8 stops um, or trains um, and it, it just sort of reminded me that uh, <laughs> there's a routing train simulator uh, that's been created by the fantastic guys over at PDL virtual district line uh, where you can basically drive the London Underground District Line, not the full one, um, because the District Line integrates the Circle and Hammersmith and City, um, but this essentially gives you a good example of how you can effectively drive part of the District Line on this uh, on this trip today. So I believe it included in this uh, in this sort of route is you've got the route out to Richmond, you've got the route out to Ealing Broadway, and then you've got the integration between the Piccadilly Line as it goes between there and Hammersmith. We've also got the line up to uh, Kensington Olympia, the line down to Wimbledon and the line up as far as Edgware Road which is where we're going today. So we're doing a Wimbledon to Edgware Road service um, basically at the start of the S8 when they first came into service and this, this scenario has been designed by the guys at the district line um, and it's been designed specially because it's got announcements so in this scenario you should be able to, to hear the announcements as they go along. Uh, it's also going to be a route review, so uh, you're going to be able to see uh, what I think of the route, where we're standing at, basically everything about it. Uh, the only thing I've changed about this scenario is the weather. Um, it was set to 3D clear, um, which is a very, very, very bright weather system in the game, um, and I don't like 3D clear. So as a result of that, I've changed this over to uh, cloudy using the AP uh, Sky Weather Enhancement Pack, and it looks fantastic. Um, so that's the only thing that's changed is that, and this is the original S8, this is not the, uh, there's been an upgraded one that I haven't got, because I haven't got around to getting that yet, um, but uh, this is the essentially the S8 on London Underground District Line, so uh, all links will be in the description if you are looking to, uh, to purchase this, uh, well not purchase it, get it for free, because it is freeware, um, so all links will be in the description if you are interested. Uh, what is required is obviously the London Underground S8, which can be purchased from Just Trains. And also, um, we will be doing the Metropolitan Line at some point, the um, the full one. Um, there's lots of different routes you can do on it, from Chesh Chesham to Watford, all the way up to, um, as far as it goes, to Amersham, down into suburban London. So we will be doing that at some point, but that will be much further down the line, um, because I need to get my knowledge, my route knowledge, uh, right for that and that is quite a difficult route to do if you don't have that much route knowledge. Anyway, so let's get further. Uh, without further ado, let's get into this and I hope you enjoy. Welcome to the London Underground District Line. Um, so we're just going to fade and you're going to be suddenly there in a couple of minutes. Thank you and see you in a sec. Hello everyone and welcome basically to uh, to this scenario uh, here on the London Underground District Line. We are here in Wimbledon on a beautiful sunny day, very bright inside the cab but I'll be able to turn the cab lights on. This is how it starts uh, in the S8 stop. So welcome, this is a London Underground route, a London Underground train um, and hopefully it should be nice and fun to be able to drive today and showcase uh, what is the fantastic District Line. Um, so good morning T059 which is um, our, our number. Uh, after the S7 training you've passed, it's your first crack at driving the S7 on the Wimbleware. Uh, these are brand new trains coming into service alongside the C-Stop, which is still existing. Uh, put in the destination code 231, <coughs> handheld radio is 14355, and train code is 59. We're all stations to Edgware Road. Uh, thanks and hope it all goes well. So to unpause that, um, I've got a picture of that on my phone so that I can just uh, take down all the details. Um, so the preparation in order to start this up is, well, the first thing I do is, so I can't be bothered with the um, the, the constant harassment <laughs> you, you get if you uh, 
don't move the train controller in a sense. So I'll just put it into override, um, which is Shift and E. Uh, and then what you do is you go over to here and you turn your train secure to on. That will basically allow you to have all the functions of moving the master control switch, which is this one here, which you need to put into trip cock, which is basically where it needs to be. Um, if you get a trip cop activation or anything like that, you have to put it into restricted manual for about two or three minutes and then you can proceed 10 mile an hour max in restricted manual. Anyway, so we'll go off the details that they've given us. So we are uh, T059, so we'll just put uh, handheld well, duty number 059. Handheld radio is 14355, so we'll put that in, and train number is. 59. Yeah. Lovely. And then it said that we're 231 in this TMS. So that's 231. Now this is all going to be wrong because this is actually an S8 stop made made for specifically for the Metropolitan line. Um, so it works perfectly on the Met line, but it doesn't work just as well on this. Um, what you'll be able to see is uh, what we're going to do is just going to open the doors. Uh, which you do with T, um, but you also need to do it with the uh, the door controls, which are here. Um, there's a system that you have to go by with all of that. Anyway, so this is us here. Welcome to Wimbledon. Looking fantastic, that is for sure. Um, I probably have already done a MetLine um, sort of mini scenario on the channel already. I, I can't remember, it's been quite a long time, but. Uh, if I have, then fair enough, but we want to explore it in a lot more detail, and this is where we're returning to the, the MET line, how it's always meant to be. So the doors close automatically, but that doesn't mean that you know you can, you can leave. The doors are still open effectively, people can open them if they want using the buttons. You've got to press this close doors button to ensure that stops. This is all ATO, none of this is functional because ATO is a very, very, very complicated system that hasn't been implemented into the game yet, even though uh, the district line, I believe, use ATO at some point of the track section. The next station is Wimbledon Park. Right, let's get the door shut. Um, you've got the announcements, which I hope you'll enjoy for this. This isn't something that you get on all your scenarios, it's just something that the guys at BDL have included as part of this scenario. So we're on our way. Um, so our train today, once you get up to 15, I'll let you know all the way up to Edgware Road, through the centre of, uh, of London. We'll be calling at Wimbledon Park, Southfields, East Putney, Putney Bridge, Parsons Green, Fulham Broadway, West Brompton, Earls Court, High Street Kensington, Notting Hill Gate, Bayswater, Paddington, and finally Edgware Road. So it's quite a few stops, but uh, the frequencies and the short dwell times mean that you could probably get this done in around 20 minutes. Um, probably shorter to be honest. So, uh, our next stop is Wimbledon Park. Um, East Putney is where the South Western Railway diverges off. So, this line here is used by both um, uh, underground trains and um, sort of like real trains. So, you've got AWS signalling on here like normal, uh, which is what the underground trains have to follow. So, they've all got to put in a head code and stuff like that to be able to, to work this. If we're on the 45, yeah, we are good. So, if we go to 45, you won't get any AWS because we haven't got any AWS equipment in this cab, so it should be fine. There's a C stop over there. So, that comes with the route. It's a pretty decent model, that you can drive it. We all get round to that at some point, it's just that it's very, very complicated to drive. There's a lot of command controls, and uh, just like the D stop, so um, we'll get round to that at some point. So you've got uh, Wimbledon Depot over here, this is the South Western Railway line along here, but this also is the South Western Railway line as well, as far as East Putney. Just over the brow of this hill, we'll reach 45 and start braking.
So this is Wimbledon Park. So, uh, what do I think of this route? Um, from the outset, I'm going to say, make your own mind up on what you think about it. It's been heavily worked on and upgraded, and I'm hoping... There you go. I'm hoping that if you... Um, if you follow the route closely enough, there'll be further and further sort of um, iterations and extensions. They've, they've recently added Edgware Road. That's quite a while ago now. I think since COVID it's been a bit slow. This is Wimbledon Park. Please mind the gap between the train and the platform. This is a district line train to Edgware Road. The next station is Southfields. So I'll teach you a little bit about the S8. So I'll teach you a little bit about the, the train stopping, where you're meant to stop, how to activate these. Um, Sort of CCTV camera feeds, which are all static, but it's a nice little effect. I'll also teach you a little bit about the route. I think the route looks, as you can probably see, even with sort of the cloudiness of the day and, and there's clouds in the sky, the route is very bright and um, it certainly looks like they've taken original Kuju assets and they've worked really hard with them to make them as good as they can possibly be. And it looks really, really good, but on the downside, turn your brightness down when you do this route because it is extremely bright um, and things, everything seems shiny even if it's just like a, a blank object and it doesn't seem right that at all but um, but anyway I, I enjoy it I love the sort of these sort of wirings that they've got on either side of the route they've worked really hard to sort of create a full fully dynamic feel to this uh, to this route. Um, I will show you the route map once we get into this station here. This is Southfields. As I said, I will show you the route map just so that you can see exactly where we are and what's included. Um, as, as, as always, everything will be in the description below. So if you are interested in, um, in getting this, be my guest, absolutely. Well worth it. So at the next station I'll teach you how to use the S7 and the S8 and how to stop in the right place. Because that's not the right place. <laughs> I just stopped there. Anyway, let's have a look at the um, the map. So here we are at Southfields. We started down here at Wimbledon, which is the furthest, most southernmost point of the map. Uh, you've got Wimbledon Depot here, and then you can head north uh, through sort of you've got Parsons Green up here. Then you've got Earls Courts, a bit of the Piccadilly line. This is Southfields. West Brompton. Please mind the gap between the train and the platform. A light here for the All England Tennis Club. This is a district line train to Edgware Road. The next station is East Putney. And then you've got the uh, Kensington Olympia here, which is for the Olympia shuttle, the Kensington Olympia shuttle. Um, that's about as far as you can go. This sort of goes down to Victoria, this line here, but because it merges with the circle line, that lot, they haven't done that much yet. Um, then this is where the Piccadilly line sort of follows it. So you've got Brown's Court uh, and Hammersmith here. Uh, I think you've, this is one of Hammersmith, the terminating part of Hammersmith station. They haven't done that yet because that once again is also part of the Hammersmith and City line which is not the district line um, then you can go all the way out here to Turnham Green then you can go south takes you down to Richmond um, on the South Western Railway and then you can go north even as far as Ealing Broadway which is a nice little part of the route and even up to North Ealing there um, so there is quite a few bits included you've got a big depot here over at Acton Town um, so there is a huge amount included in this route as well as obviously Edgware Road which is where we're going later today and Paddington, Hammersmith City Line, which is where I got my train from the other day. Um, yeah, huge amount included, and I really, you know, if you want a decent uh, simulation, this is uh, this is what you want. You know, this is this is sort of like a freeware version of the Met Line. Uh, station is East Putney. And I really enjoy driving on it. I think it's a very immersive. Um, way to drive, you know, 
the London Underground. And I think this S8 stuff has probably got to be one of the best additions to Train Simulator in the past couple of years. It really has. It's completely blown me away the amount of the immersiveness of having these fingerprints on the on the dash on the displays just to show that it's been used you know it's very highly detailed and sort of programming it and getting the HVAC you can open the cab door even if you wanted to very immersive simulation by the guys at Just Trains and I don't expect any less they are extremely talented developers um, so yeah you know it's quite the perfect combination this really is He's cut me. So this is where the uh, you see you've got the signal here with the uh, sort of junction indicator. And this is where the Southwestern Railway will diverge onwards to the right, and we're going to go straight ahead. See you stop. So this is now London Underground only here, so you won't see any um, you won't see any sort of Southwestern Railway trains come up this way. If you did, they'd be very lost. I'll tell you that. So the next station after this is, uh, where are we, Putney Bridge, um, that's where I'm going to show you how to stop the S8 stop and uh, do it correctly because as you can see this is not the right place to stop, might be at the back but at the front I think you're a little bit, yeah, this cab door is going to be past this. This is East Putney, you see, so. please mind the gap between the train and the platform, this is a district line train to Edgware Road, the next station is Putney Bridge. So we're going to get going, next stop is Putney Bridge. That's the only thing that I didn't like when this S8 stop on the Met Line came out, is the fact that you just couldn't, there were no announcements to it, so as, as in-depth as it felt like in the, you know, in, in the underground train itself, it's just that you didn't have any announcements, and announcements make up about, you know, make up a huge percentage of the overall sort of experience on the underground, you know. The announcements are there, you know, they've got the same people making the announcements all the time and, you know, very special, talented people that do that. But it's just uh, sad that they were omitted. So this is about as close as you're going to get, probably, to uh, an all-in London underground experience. I'll give my rating for it um, as we get uh, closer to Edgware Road. Obviously, the, tr uh, the, the the route will get busier as we get further north. So, but uh, as I'm recording this, I've just come come back from a trip uh, where I, I travelled through London on the uh, Hammersmith and City Line, a barking train from Paddington through to Euston Square. And uh, Euston Square, you change for London Euston Station. It's about a six-minute walk. Something like that, five minute walk, probably less than that to be honest. I know off my hand I've been doing it for years, absolutely years. I think first started doing it about ten years ago, that that trip out of Houston Square and walking down. It's the only negative thing. So here we go, this is stopping. We just want to stop about there, I'd say. There we go, perfect. You can perfectly see this signal. Uh, you can't see the banner. Uh, this, essentially, there's a marker here on the S8 marker, as you can see. As long as you are at exactly the start of it, which is pretty much bang on right there, um, these will activate. These um, displays will activate, and you'll be able to. This uh, is partly bridge. A light. Please mind the gap between the train and the platform. This is a district line train to Edgware Road. The next station is Parsons Green. And then, as we go past it, 
these displays will go out in a minute. So essentially, these are not cameras that are on the train. As you can see, these are CCTV cameras that are on the platform. Um, now, this system you're here works in a very, very similar system to how um, TFL Rail or Crossrail works. Um, so essentially, if you've ever had a look at a Class 345 cab, they also have these sort of displays here, which were ported. Um, essentially, very similar displays to what they've got in the S8 stuff. Um, and essentially, what they do is along the along the route, instead of having um, the cameras on the side of the trains, because they tend to be quite poor quality, um, you see. Um, TFL want to ensure safety and they've actually invested a huge amount into building platform infrastructure that can do that job instead. So nowhere on an S8 stock or an S7 stock will you find any sort of cameras on the side of the trains. There aren't any DOO cameras. Because the idea is that DOO cameras are, are too poor in quality to be able to maintain the safety of the public. Um, so instead of that, they've got these, uh, as you can see here, we're just passing one there, CCTV cameras which are located alongside the platform. And it's those CCTV cameras there that these are linked to, as you can see. Um, and that is what monitors the station infrastructure. So it's sort of like a wireless signal between the train and marker, and then as long as it's over that marker, um, data from that. This is Parsons Green. Please mind the gap between the train and the platform. This is a district line train to Edgware Road. The next station is Fulham Broadway. Yeah, those uh, cameras will activate as long as you park it in the right position. If you don't park it in the right position, probably as you saw earlier, these won't activate and as such you've got to then move the train to be able to get it in exactly the right position. Um, once you've driven these trains over and over and over and over, um, you'll just get to a point where you know exactly how to drive them, exactly the performance and exactly where to stop at every single station, no matter where it is. Um, you don't really need route knowledge to be able to, to work that part out. As long as you understand the train, the dynamics, the physics of how it works, uh, and the performance, you can pretty much ensure that you can stop perfectly in every station. I'll show you an example when we get to Fulham Broadway, which is a station I've probably not stopped at in about over a year. As you can see, we're starting to slow down here as we enter Fulham Broadway. C stop there waiting at the platform. As you get more and more confident you can approach the platform at a higher speed to ensure you are hitting those timings that, that, that uh, London Underground have set in the timetable. Oh bugger. Oh dear. There you go nearly hit it in emergency there. <laughs> um, yeah, so you'll start to get used to the train and the physics and everything like that. Um, I mean, the normal way to uh, to be able to do this trip would be to do it in, in this mode here. And I'll, I'll do it in this mode just to show you what it's like. Um, this so is full and broad one. A little bit more difficult. Please mind the gap between the train and the platform. A right here for Stamford Bridge Stadium. This is a district line train to Edgware Road. The next station is West Brompton. I'm going to go anywhere or... Oh god, I've put it into emergency, haven't I? Useless. I need to, I need to reinstall that SA. <laughs> the sounds are really choppy if you just didn't hear them then. Um, yeah, that would just be a, a bug. Um, I need to reinstall basically the whole DSA and get it back up to, up to normal standards. Once you have add-ons for a certain amount of time, you keep installing new stuff to the game. 
Um, some of the files might corrupt just um, voluntarily <laughs> on their own uh, and can cause little issues like that. Uh, obviously, it's not too much of an issue, but it should be alright. It's rectifiable, so that's good. Anyway, we're now heading to West Brompton, so we are getting right into the centre of London. Earl's Court is uh, obviously where they have a lot of the big movie premieres and stuff like that, so uh, we're, we're really getting there. As you can see, this is Earl's Court up here, actually, to be honest. So, and having to head up this incline just to be able to get there. So Earl's Court is quite a big interchange, where you've got the Piccadilly line as well and stuff like that. So. So technically we're a little bit too far, but at the same time we're alright. As you can see, only at some stations you'll only get some um, you only get some displays that will show up. As you can see, so don't be alarmed. That's purely normal. This is West Brompton. Change here for national rail services to Olympia and other destinations. This is a district. So here we go, now heading into Earl's Court here, so we've got a 25 mile an hour speed limit, going to a 35 as we cross over and sort of head north towards High Street Kensington. This is where the route gets really interesting because you have to climb quite a lot into Earl's Court and uh, lots of different gradients and lots of... Interesting speeds that you're having to manage. And welcome to Earl's Court. The next station is Earl's station here at Earl's Court. Anyway, our next stop heading north, uh, we're just about here on the map as you can see right in the middle of central London and we're going to head north now. Oh, it's it's Earl's Court. Change here for the Piccadilly line and district line services to other destinations. And right here for the Earl's Court exhibition halls. This is a district line train to Edgware Road. The next station is High Street, Kensington. Lots of different interchanging speed limits here. So you've got a siding there essentially where trains can terminate and uh, go back on themselves back to, uh, you know, Richmond, Wimbledon, various destinations, even Ealing Broadway. We've got Firstly coming up here, followed by proceeding by a 20 mile an hour speed limit very, very shortly as we head around the curve towards uh, High Street Kensington. So if you headed around that way, uh, you would end up with the where, meeting where the circle line goes, Gloucester Road, that sort of area, down towards Tower Hill and uh, Victoria, eventually Barking, and uh, around the corner to Liverpool Street, like normal, and all gate. Um, that part of the route isn't included, though. Um, I don't even know if Gloucester Road is in included. Yeah, Gloucester Road is included, uh, but that's about as far as you can go. Trying to maintain a good speed limit as we head round this curve heading north to High Street Kensington now. The next station is High Street Kensington. So this uh, S7 stock, I haven't got any sound add-ons for this. I think this is exactly how it comes out of the box. I wanted to leave it like that just so that I didn't uh, confuse people with having loads of different sound add-ons. 
Um, so that signal there is showcasing that we're heading north out of High Street Kensington. If you just proceeded to go straight ahead like normal, you would go into uh, terminating platforms with the buffers. So. There we go, this is High Street Kensington, so we're really getting close now, we've only got a handful of stops now before we head into uh, our terminating station, which is uh, Edgware Road, very shortly. As you can see... There we go, perfect. Still saying Watford on here, just you can just ignore that. <laughs> There's nothing really much you can do about that system. It is uh, linked directly to the Met line and uh, works perfectly with that, but not great with any other route. So that's what it's meant for, you see. This is High Street, Kensington. Please mind the gap between the train and the platform. Change here for the circle line to other destinations. This is a district line train to Edgware Road. The next station is Notting Hill Gate. So this system here, if you um, depart the platform whilst the two red lights are still on, but the blue light is on, that means you're departing way too soon. And it can confuse the system and uh, cause the train to go into an error. Um, so what you've got to do all the time when you get to every sort of station, got to allow the two red lights to stay there and the blue light will come on and then allow the two red lights to then extinguish and then you can move. If you move before that it can cause issues with the train so good to know. Now, I've done that too many times obviously trying to um, trying to do high speeds. I will showcase here at Notting Hill Gate what you're meant to do or what a normal district line driver would do is basically approach the platform at about 30 miles an hour and ram on the brakes as fast as you can. So these brakes are really quite effective, I can tell you that. So we're not braking yet, we're not braking yet, we're not braking yet, we're not braking yet. Now we're going to start braking. Next station is not a and that is what your normal district line driver will do because they're so used to the route that they can do it with their eyes closed. There you go. Perfect. So, um, you've lined it up perfectly. I know the rear coaches aren't going to be in there, but the platform's not long enough here. So, you would have SDO here like normal, but uh, you don't have that option. SDO on these trains, uh, it says... This is Notting Hill Gate. Please mind the gap between the train and the platform. Change here for the central line. This is a district line train to Edgware Road. The next station is Bayswater. Yeah, so it says, it says something, it comes on the intercom and says the front doors are not to be used at this station, please use other doors. And um, the station famous for that, Baker Street, I think it is, is it Baker Street, something like that? I believe so. Either that or Great Portland Street, it did it yesterday on the... Um, on the Haverson City line, I, I always hear it at that station, Baker Street, the front doors will not open at this station, please use other doors. And that's basically the SDO system. Oh, oh, overcooked that one. 
So you can either overcook it or undercook it, but in that situation, as you can probably see here, yeah, I've overcooked it <laughs> massively. People are just going to walk out into that. You can never get it perfect. It's always, it's very difficult, you see. Um, sometimes it's fast enough, sometimes it's not. This is Bayes Water. Please mind the gap between the train and the platform. This is a district line train to Edgware Road. The next station is Paddington. Paddington! So I've had essentially Paddington Underground has uh, four platforms. It has two platforms on this section, on the district line section. It's got another two platforms which are on the north section, which is the Circle of Hamilton and City Line. Either of those ones will take you to Edgware Road, but only the north section platforms will take you on the edge um, on the uh, Hampton City line and Circle line that goes through. So if you've got on these platforms here that we're going to be approaching Paddington shortly and, and wanted to go to, I don't know, let's say King's Cross, St Pancras, you'd have to change at Edgware Road. All trains terminate here, I believe, maybe apart from some during the peak, but as far as I know, all trains terminate here on these platforms at Edgware Road. So what I do when I get to Paddington is I go to the north platform. And that way you just get on a direct train from there. So. Um, those northern platforms are new platforms of Paddington. They've been completely redesigned, whereas the platforms that we're entering now, these are the original Paddington Underground Station platforms. There's those CCTV cameras I was on about. So the class 345s is TFL Rail we use a very similar system. So along the Great Western Main Line, you will see these CCTV cameras that have been put at every platform. That's so the uh, Elizabeth Line trains can basically use them just like the underground trains do. There you go, that's a lot better. Slow and steady wins the race, as they say. Welcome to Paddington. I'll get a nice little screenshot here because I quite like it here, to be honest, it's a nice little station. So next stop is Edgware Road where this train terminates. So what do I think of this route? Virtual District Line, really, really good route. Uh, this I'll is give Paddington. It. Change here for National Rail Services. This is a District Line train to Edgware Road. The next station is Edgware Road where this train will terminate. I'll give it an 8 out of 10. A um, bit rough around the edges when it comes to textures and decals and stuff like that. Uh, only, only because it's freeware, it's never going to be perfect. You know, you're going to get a wonderful job with just trains, but you're never going to get that same with this. For a freeware route, it is insanely good, and I, I absolutely recommend it. If you haven't got it before, I really recommend it. Um, you don't have to drive this. You can drive the C stock. You can drive other stock. I think it even comes with a battery loco to do engineering works. I will do more videos on this in time, but for now, thank you very much for joining me. It's been a fantastic trip on the Virtual District Line. There's so much more to explore. Link is in the description. If you want to try this out yourself. So that's the line there from Paddington, where I came from yesterday. From the other Paddington. trains will go through this platform here. You can see this is a terminating platform here. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, LM simulation video. I will be back with some more fantastic uh, Train Simulator 2022 videos and I'll be doing Rush Hour very soon, looking at the Rush Hour DLC. I'm just waiting for uh, all the bugs to calm down and everything to get fixed and then we'll be checking that out. So do keep an eye out for my next video here on LM Simulation but I hope you've enjoyed this one. It's been a pleasure to bring it to you. Virtual District Line, the link is in the description, and I hope you enjoy. Well, that's everything from me today. I hope everyone has a fantastic rest of your week, weekend, wherever you are, whatever you're doing in the world. Take care, and I'll see you in the next LM Simulation video here on YouTube. Take care, and ta-ra. This is Edgeware Road. 
Please mind the gap between the train and the platform. This train terminates here. Change here for the Circle and Hammersmith and City Line services. Please take all of your belongings with you when you leave the train. All change, please. <laughs>